We've all heard about the Big Bang Theory that explains how the universe came into existence. Most of us just take it as undeniable fact. Just like the belief that Marvel fans are upset about James McAvoy leaving the X-Men franchise. The truth may be a bit different though. And I'm not talking about McAvoy. The Big Bang Theory is nothing more than an attempt to explain the creation of the world made by astronomers of the 20th century. There have appeared many new scientific discoveries since that time, and many of them shake the foundations of the famous theory. It's full of gaps and unanswered questions. So, doesn't this mean it's not that perfect? In this video, I'll tell you how many dimensions can the universe have? What if the world was made of liquid? And most importantly, you'll find out why the Big Bang Theory could be wrong. At first, it seems that the Big Bang Theory sounds plausible. It says that around 14 billion years ago, the universe existed as a space singularity. Simply put, it was a teeny tiny object composed of small particles similar to an atom with an immensely high density. The object was so hot that at some point it suddenly expanded and triggered the Big Bang. This baby grew to the size of a solar system at a speed similar to something like the speed of light. Modern scientific studies partly confirm this version of events. Observations show that other galaxies move away from us, and the distances between them become longer as well. This means that they used to be located much closer to each other. It turns out that the universe is expanding, and according to astronomers, this process will end sooner or later. And then the world will start contracting back into that space baby it was at the very beginning. Any questions? Yes, lots of them. First of all, this theory doesn't mention what led up to the Big Bang and singularity. Could it be that scientists forgot to tell us about that? No, they just don't know what to tell us. Everyone nurtures the hope that they'll find the answer in the theory of quantum gravity when the world's best brains finally sort it out. Secondly, the theory claims that, starting from the moment when the Big Bang occurred, the expansion of the universe has been accelerating. But what is the reason for that? Forgot to tell us again? No, just have no idea again. Thirdly, the universe is much bigger than our eyes can see. Equipment designed for astronomical research becomes more advanced and lets us detect more distant objects. Scientists need to better clean their glasses and their telescope lenses, and then they'll see there's no reason to believe that the process of expansion will ever stop. The most formidable opponent of the Big Bang Theory is the hypothesis saying that the world appeared out of nothing. It not only denies the singularity that preceded the Big Bang, but also excludes the possibility that the universe will eventually contract back into its original state. Scientist Ahmed Farag Ali reckons that the universe has neither a beginning nor end. Its size and lifetimes are infinite. Other alternative theories also argue with the Big Bang Theory over many details. For instance, they disagree that there was just one bang. The cyclic model of the universe, proposed by American physicist Paul Frampton, assumes that there actually were a series of Big Bangs. What's more, they keep occurring all the time. According to one of the versions suggested by this theory, dark matter triggers the expansion of the universe until it splits into separate fragments. Each of them becomes a new contracting universe that releases energy, which, in turn, causes another Big Bang. This cycle endlessly repeats, which rules out a beginning or end of time as stated by the Big Bang Theory. Besides, the cyclic model of the universe gives us its own idea of dimensions. We tend to think that there are three of them, like on a regular coordinate system showing the length, width, and height. Plus, a nice bonus, the notion of time. However, the physical world of the cyclic model of the universe includes 10 spatial and one time dimension, or 11 in total. Under the concept of dimension, scientists here mean spaces similar to our universe. 
They're called brains, short for membranes. There's also a version that the Big Bang happened due to our brain hitting another one. Such collisions occur all the time and come in cycles. The bad news is that this hypothesis has the same problem the Big Bang theory struggles with. It's not clear how these cycles got started in the first place. Hopefully, revolutionary equipment of the future will later fill in the blanks of the cyclic Big Bang's theory. But what if there was no explosion, no bang at all? Researcher James Quatch says that the universe was born without any Big Bangs. Most probably, it formed after a bundle of formless energy had frozen into ice, the same as usually happens with water. This new version, named the Big Chill, suggests that the early universe was like a liquid. At some point, it cooled and crystallized to form the four-dimensional space-time that we see today. We can compare this process to water that freezes to become an ice cube that you drop into your whiskey. According to the Big Chill theory, space-time consists of identical building blocks resembling atoms. They're so small that it's impossible to see them directly. Subsequently, there's no way to prove this theory, although James Quatch thinks that there's still a chance to detect them. He says that at the moment the blocks were cooling and crystallizing, they should have created the same cracks in the universe as we see on ice. The scientist and his colleagues calculated that some of them could also be visible. Now they need to run an experiment and finally find them. But how? The thing is, light and other particles can bend off or reflect off these defects. Perhaps the Big Bang Theory will soon have to take the back seat while the crystallized universe theory gets its time in the spotlight. But what if all our attempts to find out how the world was created are futile? What if it's all just a simulation? After watching The Matrix, I bet many of us were wondering, could Lana and Lily Wachowski be right? A German engineer named Konrad Zuss believes they could be. He was the first to suggest that our universe is just a computer program. His follower, Professor Seth Lloyd, who refers to himself as a quantum mechanic, claims that everything in the universe is made of bits, zeros and ones, and our world is, in fact, a simple database. This idea doesn't deny the fact that our world consists of atoms. It just says that there are bits of information, too. If we think about it, we can conclude that atomic collisions are operations, machine language is the laws of physics, and the universe is a quantum computer. It could be a universal Turing machine, for example. This is an abstract computer equipped with doubly infinite tape that's divided into cells. The control unit can move left and right on the tape and perform read-write operations. And who knows, maybe one of the cells contains complete information about you, the universe, and even James McAvoy. Perhaps we're all some kind of an interface that gives access to the universal internet data. The uncertainty principle of quantum mechanics could serve as indirect proof that our universe is a virtual world. According to this, particles are unstable and only freeze into a certain state when observed. It turns out that Big Computer Brother keeps watching us. Our life is just a simulation. Deal with it. <laughs> so, where's the truth after all? How do you think the universe was created? Do you prefer the version saying it's a boiling kettle while our planet is just one of the bubbles? Or is everything around us a hologram? Or maybe it doesn't matter anyway, because James McAvoy is so hot that he'll soon erupt and create a new Mick universe. Drop a comment and let us know what you think. Also, check out this video where I talk about actual walls we can find in space, and specifically, the giant wall astronomers found at the edge of the universe.